How are you? I hope school at home is going okay. Um, my name is Miss Lisa and I'm back for another installment of Storytime Extension, uh, ideas that you can do at home related to our storytime theme. These are especially geared toward older toddlers and preschoolers, um, but I have a sixth grader at home that does a lot of these along with my little ones. So hopefully uh, there's something in here for everybody. Our theme this week was snow. If you haven't already, you can go watch Miss Jenny's story time with your little one and then come back to this video. This one is just for the grown-ups. It's some ideas of things that you can do together. Okay? All right. So we are talking about snow, which meant I had about 25 things that I wanted to do this week. Um, normally, during our snow-themed week at story time for our Explore More Story Times, we make a catapult, which is so much fun. And we catapult some ping pong balls that we color to look like snowman heads. And we see how far we can make them go. And it is a super fun steam activity. Um, we usually do it with like a yardstick and I think a masking tape as the fulcrum. And then the yardstick is a lever and we stick a cup on one end and we toss it on the other side. Um, and it's so much fun, but that doesn't necessarily translate well to me talking to you right now. So, despite that being one of my favorite things we do all year, I came up with some ideas that might be a little bit easier for you to do at home. You can totally do the catapult thing. Yeah, just take them outside. <coughs> all right, so my first thing that I was thinking of is that you could pretty easily do some paper snowflakes at home and you could decorate those um, use them to decorate your house. So what you'll need to do is just fold the snowflake in, you'll fold it in half and then you'll fold, or paper, cut a square of paper, fold it in half, fold it in half again, and fold it in half one more time. And then cut all around and open it back up, makes a snowflake. If you want your child, if you have a very specific child that wants to like have instructions, um, you could always there are some really nice printables that you can do that have a pattern on one part and then how to fold it. Um, and that makes it a little bit clearer than what I just did, which was not very clear. So uh, paper snowflakes are a fun activity. If cutting through all of that paper with scissors is too hard for your little one's hands, you can use coffee filters as well. And that makes the cutting part a little bit easier, especially with all those layers stacked. Um, if the coffee filters are too easy, you can go to something a little more stiff. So when we're working with kids and scissors, we don't want it to be so soft that it like folds with the scissors. Um, and we don't want it to be so hard that the kids don't have the muscle to do it. So kind of navigate based on where your child is. If, if printer paper is gonna be the best option, work with printer paper. If construction paper, if they need something heavier, that might work too. Um, and coffee filters are always there for the youngest ones. That's a really good option. All right. Whenever we're working with scissors, we are building those muscles for writing. So working with scissors and learning to cut is very important. However, normally in story time, I give a big scissor alert warning where I make a horribly obnoxious noise just to make sure that all the parents know and the caregivers know that there are scissors at one of the stations because you don't want accidental haircuts. So just a reminder, friends, if you are watching with your grown-up, we only cut scissor, with scissors to paper, and we only use scissors when we have the approval of our grown-ups. Okay. All right, the next thing I was thinking of was that you could do a Q-tip snow painting where you just use Q-tips as the paintbrushes, dip them in the, snow, or in the white paint, and then use that to make your snowscape. Um, I don't have an example of that this week because we used another option, but I wanted to make sure I talked about that as an option because it's a nice, easy project. Um, all you need is a couple of Q-tips, white paint, and a darker color paper. The next thing I was thinking, it takes a little bit more effort, but not really, um, snow dough. And there's a lot of different options for making snow dough, but my favorite has literally two ingredients. And I like it because it only has two ingredients. So it is baking soda and water in a spray bottle. And so you put the baking soda in your sensory bin, spray it with the spray bottle of water until it starts to feel a little bit like snow. And then you can use that for a lot of days all in a row. 
Normally when I do snow week, it happens to be the warmest week of the winter um, because it's some sort of cruel joke between mother nature and I. So you might not have snow this week. Um, and if you don't, that's a fun sensory activity. If you do have snow, snow is its own sensory activity. You don't need to make anything, shove them outside. Okay. The next thing I was thinking is that also a sensory activity, um, you can make a snowman in a bag. So it, it doesn't look like much because I definitely overfilled, but this snow bag, if you lay it down, you can push all of the snow to fill up the snowman's body. And then you can push these. I put in some, um, this has pony beads and buttons and an orange pom-pom for the nose, but later on, of course, I found my foam paper, so you can use that too. But you use it to try to make yourself a little snowman in the snowman bag. Um, anytime we're doing things like this, we are again building on those writing muscles because we are manipulating small things and building our fine motor skills. So trying to get the beads where we want them and the buttons where we want them is a really good skill. I did put in a little bit too much. You probably don't want this much in there, but you know what I did do? I used old expired um, like baby wash travel size, that type of stuff. So you can use that type of stuff. Lotion works really well and um, like gel shampoos or things like that will work really well. So whatever you have left over laying around. I saw some examples where they did it with blue so that when you pushed on it, you found the snowman and if you did it on a white surface, which is a fun activity too. All right. Let's see, the next idea I had was, earlier when we talked about the Q-tip painting, I said that we did another option, and the option that we chose this week um, for school at home was that we did uh, glue and salt. You can hear what a lovely mess it's making. Um, pro tip, when you are working with anything where you sprinkle it on top, do it in a baking sheet or a baking pan or a sensory bin. Do it in something that will contain the mess a little bit vertically uh, because we don't want it all over. No, nobody wants that. So here's I'm making a mess because I don't have my baking pan. All right, so here's one example. You can see we were practicing our letters too, but basically you just squeeze regular glue. Glue stick won't work for this. Squeeze regular glue onto a darker piece of paper, sprinkle like a thicker coarse salt on it. Um, again, this was left over. It sounds like I really need to clean things out and that's true, but still. Um, so this was just left over that we had laying around. So we used just a little bit of the salt and made picture after picture after picture. Um, some of them are a little more free form and a little less obviously snow. Um, I don't know what was happening there, but we had a lot of fun squeezing the glue, which builds those muscles. We had a lot of fun sprinkling it with salt and we had a lot of fun sweeping it up later. Okay, the next thing I was thinking is that you could do a snowball count. And I found some really easy printables online that were just like a circle with a number on it. Um, if you don't feel like doing that or you don't have access to a printer, by the way, we're still doing free print jobs at Worthington Libraries, so you are welcome to send it to the printer and come pick it up in Curbside with your reserves. Fun side note. Okay, so um, if you don't feel like printing, you can also just put it um, at the bottom with, you can put down a piece of masking tape and just write a number on it. You don't need to put a lot of effort in it. It's okay. Um, so I didn't glue or tape these down, so they're going to be a little tricky to see. But you can see I just used a cupcake tin and put the numbers down in the bottom. And then we just got out some pom-poms <clears throat> in whites and blues. We use our tweezers because anytime we add tweezers to activity, we are building all those writing muscles. I know I'm obsessive. And we try to put in the right number. Now, if your child is getting really fast at the numbers in order, part of the reason I didn't attach mine is because my kiddo's getting pretty quick at her numbers, so I was going to change them up so that they aren't in order anymore. Um, so you can do that too. And if you have an older one that is working on their like counting up and counting down, you could give verbal cues like 
five plus one and then have them try to find it and put them in the right one. Or you could use flashcards for that too um, because then we're still adding a writing element to the flashcards. So, all right, Whew, that's our snowflake number circles. I know I had too many ideas this year or this week, I'm sorry. The next idea I had was a snowman Play-Doh station. And I always like to do a Play-Doh station at the beginning of the week because then it's set up all week. And when I'm at work, my little one can work on it um, pretty easily because she knows what to do. So I just put out a couple different colors of Play-Doh. I am the mean mom that doesn't let them color mix. Um, so I told her she could use either the white or the blue. So she's been making a couple different snowmen every time. I put out some of the letters I have to spell snow. Um, so that she could work on that skill as well, sounding out snow. I have fabric in there that she can use to be the scarves and let's see, pony beads again for the eyes and the mouths. And then I made just these little fake buttons, but real buttons would work better. I just happen to have those little things around. And then finally, we just put in toothpicks for the arms. Um, you can definitely come up with other stuff based on what you have in your house. It doesn't need to look exactly like that. Um, I modified it based on what I had in my house. So basically just things that they can put together and add to Play-Doh to try to make it look even more like a snowman. I didn't have a hat. Um, my children were horribly disappointed in me for not having a tiny top hat to put on their snowman. So maybe you happen to have that lying around in your tiny top hat collection. So you could definitely do that. Um, the last idea, oh, we're almost done, is that uh, you could do patterning by just cutting strips uh, of construction paper in different colors and then trying to turn it into a pattern on a piece of paper and then drawing an outline and cutting it out to be either mittens or hats would be fun. Um, I made a pretty big pattern here and I only repeated it one time um, so that we could have the gloves match. So when I make the top, the glove from up here, it will coordinate and match with this one. Um, so we can make a little glove set. I would um, have your child try to do the straight lines if they're working on their cutting skills. I would have them do the patterning. Um, and then I would probably go ahead and draw the hat or the glove. Or you could do scarves too. You could pretty much just turn it like this, cut the lines straight and call it a scarf. Um, but if you are working on your cutting skills with your child, then they could they could cut out along the lines. Um, if they're working on their drawing skills or they're an older child, they could easily do the drawing and the cutting if they're a slightly younger one and cutting out the mittens would frustrate them. Um, you can do that part. Yeah, and then they, if you're making a scarf, they can add fringe on the end because one of the earliest ways that we start cutting is by doing that fringe cut where they just kind of go all the way along one side. Yeah, that's pretty normal. All right, that is all I have as far as things you can prep. Now, if we happen to have a snowfall sometime soon, I would also really like to encourage you to try something new with the snow. So we have been trying a lot of new things in the snow this year to try to get us to stay outside longer. Um, so one of the things we tried was a snow lantern. And so you just make a bunch of snowballs and stack it up and then put a light inside of it. Beautiful, so much fun. You could do things like making snow pets if making a snowman is just too big of an activity. Or you can make a bunch of snow snow people or you could make some sort of building out of the snow or one of my favorite activities is to give my kids an older um, watercolor palette from Crayola and then they can take that out they can dip their brushes into the snow mix it into the color and then they can paint the snow with that super easy it takes about five seconds of prep you know that's my favorite kind of thing right all right, that's all I have for you today. It was just a billion ideas and hopefully um, some of them are helpful to you. I miss seeing you so much. I miss being able to do the prep for story time and have your kiddos come in and make their lovely messes here. But until we can do that again, I hope this helps you out a little bit and I will talk to you soon. I miss you. Bye.